morning, kiddos. It's Friday the 21st of July 2017. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom. I'm surprised no one's mentioned yet. And uh, we've had the new sort of little opening now for uh, quite a few weeks, actually. No one's noticed that the WWW has disappeared at the top of they. No one's mentioned that. You're not keeping your beady eyes open this morning, are you? You're not... Ke- oh, that, oh, hang on a minute. I forgot to turn the focus thing off. You're not keeping your um, beady eyes open to what's going on around you. There's always something new here in the Mirable studio to fi- for you to feast your beady eyes upon. And I was shocked and horrified this morning, boys and girls, when I switched on my computer and checked the great... BBC News website. You know the BBC. They're the ones that play the blokes a lot more than they play the ladies, uh, pay, pay the ladies at their programmes. Although, if you were watching yesterday's show, you will know when, once I saw those wages, those BBC staff were being paid. The men and the women are <laughs> chicken feed, dear. Chicken feed. Is that all? Chris Evans, two and a half million pounds. Is that all, dear? Don't make me laugh, dear. God's sake. Well, in the uh, BBC news uh, reports this morning, it says a record number of school exclusions were issued to pupils last year for drug and alcohol related issues. News statistics reveal shock horror. Shock horror. This would never have this never happened in my day at school. This is because they're getting away with everything. There's no control anymore. They need to be whipped and beaten. I have behind me a demonstration of a cane, boys and girls. This is a cane. Now, years ago, when I was at school, I went to the London... Oh, listen, listen to all the do-good... Listen to all the liberals now. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no, you mustn't hit them. Oh, you must talk to them and understand them. Poppycock, oh, dear. I don't think so. When I went to my school, the London Oratory School, this was the preferred member of uh, preferred method of punishment. Oh yes, and you would get the cane for something as simple as talking at the back of the class repeatedly. You might not get it the first time. The first time, the teacher would either shout really loudly. The second time, a board rubber would be thrown directly at you, uh, well well placed by the teacher who always seemed to manage to, 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 especially the math teacher. What was his name? Well, he was a great bloke. He was a wonderful bloke. But some of the younger, uh, some of the other children in the class um, used to take the mick. Once they knew someone had a bit of a soft spot, the, the, the rowdy ones used to take, I could name them if you want me to. There's Stephen and Shane. I think they were the worst. Was that his name, Shane? Can't remember. They were the worst ones there. I know the guy Stephen went in prison a few times after school. Surprise, surprise. Shock horror, you know. Um, but yes, uh, the, the, the maths teacher, can't remember his name. Great, great. Oh, the maths teacher, he was very good. He was able to draw a circle on a blackboard. They don't even have blackboards now, do they? Oh, no, no, it's really racist. Oh, can't have a blackboard. That's really racist. No, it's not. It's a board that's black. So that's why we called it a blackboard, you idiots. He was able to draw a perfect circle, right, by (coughs) resting his elbow onto the board, and he would go like that. And they do it again the other. I don't, don't quite know how he did it the other way. Uh, I don't no, I don't know. But he was able to do it. No, all the way around. He, he was able about three quarters of the way around. And then he kind of did this with his elbow as the center of the circle. And he would he would draw a perfect circle. And I always remember we were all clapping <coughs> the first time he did it. Very, very clever. But he was able to throw a chalkboard rubber, which was basically this wooden thing. I mean, do it take your eye out. Absolutely would it take your eye out. This this wooden thing with felt on. And this would be used to clean the blackboard. OK, so he'd, he, he could throw that directly at someone's face and you could feel the wind of the chalkboard rubber going past your face without him actually hitting you. And it would go bang against the wall. There were all sorts of... Di- oh, hang on, there's someone at my front door. Can you hang on a second? There's someone at my door. One minute. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh,
so sorry. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry about that. That that was my new plants being delivered today. I've got a load of um uh new plants that have been delivered, which I've been waiting for for a couple of weeks. Uh, Sutton Seeds, they are. Sutton Seeds. And basically, they were selling, like, all they sell off all the stuff that they haven't sold yet. And you get, like, 20 quid uh, for £250 worth of plants. That's not bad, is it? And I've got four massive boxes that have just been delivered downstairs. How long was I gone for that? And, do you know, I've put my keys down somewhere now. I can't find them anywhere. Oh, I've opened the back door. I've opened the front door. Open the front door, gone and helped her with those. Where on earth have I put those keys down? <sighs> I wouldn't have dropped them. I would have heard them if I dropped them go down. Oh, I don't know where they've gone. I'll find them in a minute. Now, where were we with the story? Um, where, where were we with the story now? Just a minute. Um, chalkboard. Yes, he could throw this chalkboard, uh, this chalkboard rubber at someone, and you would feel the wind going past your face, but you'd never actually hit anyone, which is probably good news anyway. Anyway, the preferred method of punishment, as I say, was the cane, and you'd be sent down to the front entrance hall. Re would Reardon, from 1MS, report immediately to the front entrance hall, and there would be a line of boys there, waiting to be dealt with. And they'd call your name out and you go into the um, into the headmaster's office. It was only the headmaster or his deputy that dealt with you. The headmaster, Mr Gaffney, or the uh, other he deputy headmaster was Mr McIntosh, who became the headmaster while I was at the school uh, in the second year, I think it was. And they would open the cupboard and there would be a selection of different canes there and he'd stand there. This was all part of the punishment, you see. Now that I think about it, it was all part of the punishment um uh, uh that uh, it was like a show first of all he'd sit there on the desk well boy you know what you've done wrong and then he would get up from the chair this is mr gaffney he's, he's dead now uh, and he would walk slowly over to this cupboard and open it slowly and then stand there in front of all these canes selecting one and then he'd collect out the cane like that okay bend over the chair boy uh, it would be on your ass! Oh, the pain, dear, the pain! <laughs> and that was the preferred method of punishment. And this is why these these people here, uh, these uh, people at school now, are getting away with. There's no caning, no smacking, no physical punishment at all. <clears throat> Look at this. Figures show that 9,250 permanent and fixed period exclusions for drugs and alcohol were handed out to schools in 2015 and 16 to 16. I bet it's all in the city schools, though. You wouldn't get this in little village schools. I'm sure you wouldn't. I'm sure you wouldn't. Um, the government says every child should have access to a good school place <clears throat> where they can learn without significant disruption and feel safe. So these uh, figures were published by the Department of Education. And I do feel it's because th there is no punishment there. I wouldn't like to be a, um, uh, a, a teacher at all, would you? How could you deal with such disruption all the time? It would do my head in. They throw chairs at the teachers now, don't they? They actually throw chairs at the teachers. So there's, there's my answer for that. We need to bring back the cane and that's it. Yes! Shut up, boy! And you, girl. And the girls would have it as well, I'm afraid. We're not having any sexual discrimination in the under the cane thing. You must be taken outside and beaten and beaten in su to submission until they stop doing these things. I shall display that there. <clears throat> if you want to bring your children now in front of your television sets or computers or iPhones and show them, just, just show them what that is at the back there, okay? I'll leave it there for all to display and you can tell them if you're bad at school in future, you will be caned and whipped into submission. It's the only way, boys and girls. And I think if, if you're an older person, if you're a prisoner, the same thing must happen. You must be beaten. Beaten, we'll have a bigger cane for the prisoners and people like that. What do you reckon, eh? Are you agreeing with that? There is a phone number open now if you want to call in. 20 8144 is my phone number, okay? 20 8144 Let's say hello to some morning people with us this morning. Adam the Plumber's there. Good morning, Adam. 
Ray Belasco. Good morning to Ray. Gustav says, good morning, Chrissy Babes. Uh, Chrissy Babes, dear? Chrissy Babes? That's a bit familiar, familiar, isn't it, dear? Chrissy Babes? How amazing. Just splashed my gyro up the walls of Audi and have a dozen cans of Pol Polish lager and three pot noodles. And now you are on air. The perfect morning. Thank you very much. Ah, can you eat a pot noodle for breakfast? Do people eat pot noodles for breakfast? I know when you've been out at a club all night or something like that and you might have ordered a pizza. There's like a slice left. Do you have that in the morning for breakfast? Better than wasting it, dear. Better than wasting it. Good morning to Simon Gilman. Good morning, Simon. Who said, did you hear the news? Uh, a 90-year-old woman collapsed in the kitchen and it took two hours for an ambulance to come and save her. That's how bad the NHS is. Uh, terrible news, isn't it? Terrible. I mean, if you have a heart attack, you've got no chance at all anymore, do you? Yes, you'll have to just get on a bike and take yourself to the hospitals. That's all there is to it. It just gets worse and worse, Simon. It really does. Um, Diane's with us this morning. Good morning, Diane. <clears throat> Adam says, what I can tell you about the new opening is that you can hear when the music has finished, there is a repeat, repeat of the last couple of bars at the end. Yes, I have noticed this. And it's the same at the end. And I don't know why that is. I cannot locate why that is like that. Sorry. So very, very strange and very strange and mysterious, don't you think? Yes. Uh, Ray said he was on BBC London this morning talking to the date lovely Jason. I'm not keen on Jason. Not keen on Jason. I like the... Who's the woman on there? Joe. I quite like Joe on there. Ray was teacher's... Were you teacher's pet, Ray? Did you go and bring them oranges and things like that at Christmas time? Ding dong merrily on high, in heaven the bells are ringing. I think we should do Christmas carols early this year. What do you reckon, eh? Gustav says, the question we should be asking, though, is what happens in the Mirable Studios when Chris is not live to the nation? You will have noticed he had to turn off the autofocus. He had to do that yesterday as well. So what goes on in front of those cameras when we're not invited to watch that requires autofocus? <laughs> Indeed, what happens? You can, if you want, pay for a subscription to those particular programmes, Gustav, if you want to. <laughs> Dear me. <clears throat> uh, yes, so my plants have arrived. I'm very pleased with my plants. Let's have a look there. We need interlude music. Well, we, well, we would have had interlude music if I'd have known that was going to take so long. How long was I gone for? About five minutes. <laughs> Can you imagine Hugh Edwards on the 10 o'clock news from the BBC with Hugh Edwards? Ba -da 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 oh, that's it. No, that's the 1980s music, isn't it? Da -da 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 have you heard that before? The 1980s BBC news music. I have played it before. I will play it for you again now. Just one moment, please, while I locate the said music. BBC, was it nine? I think it's the nine. Was it the nine? Nine o'clock news, 88. Let's try that one. Was it 1988? Yeah, this is the one. This is the one. Very, very powerful music. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Talk news from the BBC with Michael Burke and Philip Hayton. Da, 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 da. I love that one. We love the nine o'clock news in the 1980s. <clears throat> Perhaps I could use that as interlude music or a test card. <clears throat> Ray says, whatever happened to the dog? What dog, darling? What dog is this that you're talking about? There are no dogs in the United Kingdom talk television studios. There's no dog here, I'm afraid, at all. Uh, good morning to Christina William uh, Ewing. Peter Hyde is there. Dave O'Rourke is there. Good morning, Dave. I was having a little bit of a chat last night with uh, uh, with Dave on the uh, old the old internet there. Um, what was I going to say here? Oh, so I, here's here's a question for you. <clears throat> I don't know if you know any um, deaf people. Quite a serious question. Quite a serious question. Okay. So I was in home base yesterday. I went to buy some Miracle Grow. Miracle growth, my plants, um, and uh, my mate was in there, and he had to buy two little paving stones. Okay, so I approached said person who was kneeling down on the floor, 
And I said to said person, excuse me, can you tell me where the um, so-and-so? And, -so? and he, I thought he completely ignored me. Not a word, just carried on doing his shoves. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I tapped him on the shoulder. And he looked around, oh, oh I'm uh, deaf. So he was deaf. That's how he spoke to me. I'm not taking the mic. Okay, let's have a... Oh, right, okay. And I then, once he told me that, I, I, I kind of mouthed the question. Can you tell me where the miracle grow is? I said, oh, go front desk. Okay, fine enough. So I went so I went to the front desk. Was that the correct thing to do, though? You know, to, as soon as he said he was deaf, I, like, mouthed, assuming, perhaps rather stupidly on my part, that he might be able to do lip reading. Well, do you think that was that was the right thing to do? Or should I have just done thank you and just walked off to the desk? What do you think? I'd be interested to know. What, what would be, like, the correct way to... Um, uh, to reply to the to the person who's uh, uh, hard of hearing there. Good morning, Craig. Morning to you. I like your thoughts on that, please, because you don't want to, you know, upset or offend anyone like that. And uh, it reminded me <clears throat> when I was DJing in the Black Cap in Camden Town uh, years ago, quite a long time ago now. Um, when did I leave? Was it 2009 or 2007? I can't remember when I left now, actually. I think it might be 2000. I think it was 10 years ago I left the Black Cap. And uh, we used to have a deaf group come in there. It was club music and all that. And uh, they they would come. And they'd come up to me and they say, oh, Chris, and all that. I says, can you turn the bass up? They used to feel the bass. So of course, they couldn't hear anything. Right? But they would, they would enjoy the night by feeling the bass of the music. And they could identify different songs from the bass. And they, they had just as good a night as everyone else. Um, I used to do a, a bingo night. We called it Bingay, which was in the uh, Golden Lion. And the deaf group got to hear about this. And they came en masse one night because the bingo, I used to come up as well as me saying 4949. All on its own, number five. I would push a button and the numbers would come up on the big screens all around the venue. I think there were about three screens. And, of course, they, 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 they loved it. They absolutely loved it. <clears throat> and they'd be marking off the numbers, you know, just by looking at the screens. And I remember when that finished, uh, one of them was kind of, it was kind of a group and they had a leader. I, I can't remember what her name was. She was ever such a nice girl. And um, she said, um, such a shame. This was such a great form of entertainment for deaf people. Please let us know if you do it anywhere else. But uh, well, we never did because it was hard work, to be honest, doing that. Golden Lion Bingo in King's Cross. The, the pub's gone now. But um, it, it was great doing it. What was not so great was the setting up and the taking down, because the staff never helped me. <laughs> the staff in there, at the end of the night, customers, customers would actually help me put all this stuff away, because it involved an awful lot of, of going out and buying things for prizes and bingo tickets, selling the bingo tickets, collecting the money together, sorting out, you know, how much uh, to spend that week on prizes. And we had some good prizes there. We, had, we gave away colour televisions. Yeah. Colour televisions. There was uh, branded spirits, unbranded spirits, CDs, DVDs, boxes of chocolates, depending on what you won, you see. If it was a one-line prize, it would be like boxes of chocolates, perhaps CDs, two, uh, you know, cheap DVDs. Two-line prizes would be films that are out sort of recently, DVDs, okay? Uh, unbranded bottles, half litre bottles of spirits. Is, is it half litre, the normal price? The normal size? I'm not quite sure now. What's the normal size of a bottle of spirits? Might be a litre. And then the top price would be branded bottles of spirits. We had televisions given away and all sorts. Wonderful stuff. But it was damn hard work. And it was a lot of work for like a few hours um, uh, to do. And especially by the end of the night, if you're not getting any help putting stuff away, it was even harder work. So it was great doing it, and the deaf people used to love it. They would they would come in, and they would take up a great big long table. There must have been 20 of them in there. They loved it, loved it. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Peter says, you don't have to mouth like that, Chris. You just make sure they can see you. Okay, well, I'm, I'm impressed by that. Good morning to Ray, who joins us this morning. Gustav says, I think it's okay to mouth the words. Do you lip read? If he then says, go to the front desk, then off you go. Or if he says, yes, happy days. 
Ah, oh, yes, of course. I should have said that. Do you lip read? They would have. He probably would have understood that, wouldn't they? Uh, Dave, good morning, Dave, who says we tend to over enunciate when mouthing words. Yes, that's exactly what I did, Dave. So, uh, you know, as soon as he says, oh, I'm deaf, right, uh, uh, he, he, I, I mouthed the words, oh, can you tell me where the miracle grow is? And then, uh, you know, we did with our mouths. We wouldn't speak normally then. Like, I'm speaking to you now. I could say, hello, how are you? If I knew you were deaf, I might say, hello, how are you? And that's probably the wrong thing to do when I think about it. You know, of course, you would need to ask a deaf person, wouldn't you, I suppose? Um uh how you can uh how you can um h how to do it really uh dave says just repeat what you asked in normal speech making sure sure the person that making sure the person has a clear and unobstructed view of you yeah there's no no point in saying all right oh can you tell me where this is I mean, it's not going to work is it <laughs> it's not, not, unless you put the writing on the back of exact oh did i just show you my address Oh, no. Thank God for that. Oh, it was my tax bill that you just saw then, which has now been paid, I'm pleased to say. Tax bill paid. As a self-employed person, we get a tax bill only twice a year. Do you know, I'm worried about my keys. I'm going to have to go down and look for my keys in a minute. Uh, Christina says, <clears throat> I think it was a correct reaction. You were still involving them and not treating them as a stupid person, which I would never do. I would never do that. Also, writing the question down is given them human contact and interaction. I volunteer at a veteran drop-in centre where we have people who are uh, also hard of hearing. So thank you very much for that one, uh, Christina. Much appreciated. Um, so that was my uh, little thing in the uh, Sainsbury's home base this evening. I did have to say, and once again, I'm not making light of this subject as, uh, at all here, but uh, I was listening to a radio uh, programme advert yesterday uh and it was i can't remember it was it was an advert for something for deaf people on the radio and of course i thought to myself well how are they going to hear that <laughs> you know you can't see it on the radio presumably someone would tell them i thought what a stupid idea you can understand an advert for something for deaf people on the telly but on the radio that doesn't quite work for me does it you <laughs> There's a phone number 0208 if you want to uh, call in this morning. So that's what we did yesterday. We went to the uh, home base, got some bits and pieces, uh, went swimming. Not too many people in the swimming pool. I must say the swimming pool is a really nice temperature at the moment. Ever so nice. I've paid my annual uh, theme there. Uh, went to bed, got up, made some dinner. <clears throat> I made a load of spaghetti bolognese yesterday. And I, I also put in a packet of chilli. Oh, we do like chilli. Oh, and, and a whole packet of garlic. <sighs> so I'll, I'll have some of that, more of that, some of that this afternoon. And no doubt people tonight at the karaoke will be telling me that I've got a lot of garlic on my breath. Good. I'm glad I've got garlic on my breath. Chris, have you been eating garlic? Oh, I might have had a little bit, but it's like 12 hours ago, isn't it? Blimey. <sighs> garlic. That's what you need more of. Then I watched an excellent film on the television, which I haven't seen before. Uh, the Sweeney. Da -na -na, da -na -na. You, of course, will remember the TV series of the 1970s, if you're old enough. Um, we used to love The Sweeney. We'd be talking about it at school in between getting caned. That's a way to deal with them. Bend over, child. That is the only way to deal with people. There's no... <laughs> There's no obedience in this world anymore. You know, now and again, I make a little mistake here, boys and girls, and you don't actually see it on the telly. But I do ask. I then knock at my door and I ask my neighbour to cane me so that I know how to behave in front of you in the future. It's the only way. Sometimes my neighbour isn't in and uh, I have to very uh, carefully do it myself. But you don't get the the hard hit as, as you can get someone else to do it, do you? Huh? I got caned only twice at school, and I think both occasions talking at the back of a class was was the thing. Other favourites were detention. I think, quite honestly, I'd rather be um, caned than uh, than sit there bored to tears for half an hour at the end of uh, uh, school. Is it? You know, Dave says a little tidbit to see someone's reaction when you mouth Van Gogh at them. Just be prepared for that Van Gogh. 
Van Gogh. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Van Gogh. <laughs> see what happens there. Yeah. So I watched the Sweeney. Uh, 2012 film, so obviously not the original actors in that, it was like 30 years ago. I thought it was really good. Didn't have a very good write-up, though, apparently. And um, I was wondering, you know, d does the police force actually have something like that within it, where they would go out and treat criminals as I feel criminals criminals should be treated, to be honest. You know, if they're going to fire guns and they fire back and they're running through the streets of London and tearing down country lanes, very narrow country lanes in cars and things like that. Anyway, I thought it was an excellent film. Uh, one of the blokes in there is is gorgeous. Uh, Jack, the one who plays Jack, is really good looking. Did you see him? Oh, talking of good looking people, I found another footballer I fancy. You ready for this? Here he is, here he is. Look at this one. Oh, blimey, look at him. Isn't that gorgeous? I don't know where I got that picture from, one of the newspapers, possibly the Daily Mirror this morning. Don't know what his name is. We don't need to know his name, though, do we, boys and girls? Huh? Look at him. Oh, and how does he, how does he push his little bum backwards like that? I'm going to, I wonder if I can do that, actually. Let me, let me, let me try that. I'm, I'm going to try that with my, um, with my, um, oh, what do you call it? My, um my 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 cane this morning is is that kind of working like that does that work like that is that work let me have another look see i want to get the, i want to get the posture right here is it, is it like there? oh he's got he holds it up a little look at him and he's gorgeous who is he send him round lads here we go there it is. Look, 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 isn't it? get my bum up a little bit more does that is that working for you I don't, I don't... <laughs> Just, just someone that happened to, uh, to catch my eye this morning, while I was uh, <coughs> while I was watching that. Anyway, yeah, the bloke who plays Jack is really good looking in this uh, Sweeney, which was on Film Four, boys and girls. Film Four. There's no subscription television here. We don't need to pay for subscription television. Thank you very much. There's enough free stuff, and Film Four is is such a free item, indeed. Uh, so well worth seeing that film. And I wondered if the police have this sort of force. I was talking to someone who is a policeman last night who will, will remain nameless. And I said to them, uh, you know, um, does this sort of thing carry on? And uh, he quite rightly said, no, of course not. Well, not really, even if it did, not anymore because of mobile phones and people like that, aren't they? And there's always someone taking a mobile phone. Oh, I've got proof. Of, oh, I've got proof of this now. And there's phones and closed circuit uh, television cameras all over the place. And you never get away with anything. It amazes me how uh, these these terrorists that we have a bit of a problem with at the moment uh, think they can actually get away. <laughs> you know, and, uh, uh, thousands and thousands of closed circuit television cameras in London and they think they can get away from them. I don't think so. They get them all in the end. And thank God for that. Thank God for that. It's just a shame that they have to live afterwards, isn't it, really? But no, I don't think that really does go on. It might have done in the 1970s, I suppose, or somewhere like that. Um, talking, talking of uh, people who are filmed doing things, naughty and all that business, a similar story in the uh, BBC News site this morning. Apology demanded after airport terror stop reading Syrian books. So a British woman says she's being forced to go to court to get an apology after she was questioned but now, this is this is it. She was only questioned. She was only questioned. Questioned by counter-terrorism police for reading a Syrian art book on a plane. Now, I don't know what language this Syrian art book was in. Presumably, it was in Syrian. Now, I think, I'm not quite sure, I think, isn't Syrian, whatever the Syrian language is, is it like little pictures and squiggles and things like that? So... If I was looking down there, I wouldn't have a clue what that says. Would you? I think it, I think it, this woman's looking to become a victim here. I really do think so. Uh, her lawyers. Uh, the, the woman was reported to authorities by a Thompson cabin crew on a honeymoon flight to Turkey in 2016. And quite correctly so, I think. Her lawyers. Of course, she's got the lawyers involved. Because she wants the money. That's what it is. She wants the money. 
Her lawyers told the BBC's Victoria Derbyshire programme, who's very posh, Victoria Derbyshire, not as posh as Jacob Rees Moog. Mog. Jason Rees Mog. But posh anyway. <clears throat> That's Victoria Derbyshire, not this woman. She believes she was singled out because of her race. No, she wasn't singled out because of her race. She was singled out because she was reading a book that looked like it had come from Syria and no one knew what it said. That's why, you stupid woman. But you're not stupid, are you? You're clever. You're clever because you're trying to get money for this. The woman who is a Muslim, which is neither here nor there, as far as I'm concerned... She was just someone on a plane. Woman, man, Muslim, Catholic, Buddhist, doesn't matter. She had a book that looked Syrian language to the person who reported her. Don't they tell you if you see anything unusual, please report it. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next, eh? There's going to be a black bag left on a floor somewhere and everyone's frightened of reporting it because it's black and that might offend someone. Are we going to get down that road? I mean, how far do you want to go down that road? She works in mental health. Again, neither here nor there. Uh, in parts, in vogues, involves... Uh, uh, sorry, who's, whose work in mental care in part involves looking for signs of radicalisation in young people was reading Syria Speaks, Art and Culture from the Frontline on the Outboard Flight. The book is a collection of literature, photos, songs and cartoons from Syrian artists and writers. I mean, wouldn't it look dodgy to you? <clears throat> what do you think? Do you think it would look dodgy to you if someone, you know, if someone looked like a bit dodgy on the plane? She obviously looked dodgy. I felt upset and distressed, followed by anger. I struggled to accept that I was being singled out for reading a book on art and, art and culture. No, you don't. You just want... um. You just want attention, love. You want attention and money, don't you? One year on, Tom, sorry, one year on, Thompson Airways has failed to provide an explanation or apology despite legal... Oh, so we're, next time we see someone reading a book with strange writing in it, then we just leave it, do we? And the plane can blow up. They were just taking precautions, woman. Drop your case and don't be so silly. If you're not getting enough money on the job you're doing, then find another one. Don't be taking people to court for this sort of thing. This is important. This is important. They were checking what you were reading. Why shouldn't they? You don't want to be dragged off a plane, kicking and screaming, and don't read that sort of book then on the plane. They don't know what it says. It could be detailed instructions on how to make a bomb. We, they don't know that, do they? How do they not know? Me too. I wouldn't know. Does that make me thick or stupid? No. I just happen not to be able to read whatever language it is in that book. They were just trying to be careful. No one's picking you out. And come on, love. You know no one was picking you out. No one was picking you out. Oh, I've got to see my lawyers. How much money can I get for this? Sick of it, dear. Sick of it. Dave O'Rourke says, at this rate, that will cast a female Doctor Who. <laughs> Where will it end? <laughs> Chris says, give her a chance. I think it's a good idea and she's a fantastic actor. Eh? Oh, sorry, you're talking about Doctor No, we weren't talking about Doctor Who. No, it... He is giving them a, a chance, Chris. That's humour, Christopher. It's humour. Dave is doing humour. Please get used to it, dear. Come on, Chris. Have a bit of humour. Good morning, Chris. It's nice to see you this morning. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. So that's that uh, uh, little story there. Um, let's have a look. Oh, I do see... Uh, oh, incidentally, if you're into fashion at all, there's a Ralph Lauren sale still on at the moment. 50% uh, 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 discounts on there, including on a lot of the footwear. If you like um, designer trainers and that, but you don't like paying the prices, hello, me, that's me, for example, then you can get a bit 50% 50, 50 off. I nearly ordered a pair last night, some blue ones, which were 50 quid instead of like 90 quid. So have a little look on there. The Ralph Lauren website, you found a lot on there. You never need to buy designer clothes at the full price. You always wait for these sales. They generally have two or three a year. What Ralph Lauren, Ted Baker, all that lot. Okay, and you can get some really, really good deals there. Good. Now, here's something. If you like flying... Um, then 
Have you ever thought about private private flights? Now, I haven't. I'm not sure about this. I found this advert come up this morning on Facebook, and it's Surf Air. Surf Air. S U R F A I R. Surf Air. And the advert says, connecting Europe with a new way to fly. Oh, yes. Imagine booking in seconds, arriving at the airport minutes before departure, then taking off in an an executive aircraft without waiting in a single line. That's Surf Air. A simple membership gives you unlimited scheduled flights from private terminals in London, Ibiza, Cannes, Zurich, Paris, Munich, Barcelona, and more. Any questions, we're here to help. 020-8610-9366. O two O eight six one O nine three double six, and I wondered about this. What a good idea! So I clicked on prices. It says learn more. Where's 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 the prices? Hang on a minute. Pricing and membership. Pricing and membership. Now it says, on this membership page, select memberships from one thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds per month, dear. Per month. Oh, dear. Fly as much as you like. Two reservations at a time. Just book, fly and book again. Upgrades allow for four or six advanced bookings at once or jet service to the additional cities. Now, so £1,750 a month. Does that include the flights? That's what I'm wondering. Would anyone know anything about that? Because it doesn't say anything else on there. Is it like £1,750 per month all the time, plus whatever the flight is? Or does that include as many flights as you could possibly want to go on? And I'm just interested in that. Anyone know the answer to that question? Please send us a little message or um, uh, put that on there. Not uh, not that I'm thinking of going anywhere. Because, you know, good morning, Stefan. DJ Stefan is in the house. Morning, Stefan. I just wondered if um, you could actually go as many times as you want, say, to to Zurich or somewhere like that, or Berlin. All these wonderful places that I haven't been to, actually, because I got fed up with the flying, didn't I? But this looks a better way of flying, isn't it? No sitting at airport next to smelly people, having to sit on those really uncomfortable plastic chairs at Heathrow Airport, unless, of course, you've upgraded or something like that. Huh? Just an idea. Has anyone ever flown in one of those little private jets or something like that? Huh? Do let us know. Stick a message on there or you can call in if you want to. 0208 344 Good morning, Stefan. I don't, don't know if I spoke to you for a while. I've given up the DJ now, Steph. I'm giving it up, dear. 30 odd years DJ and gave it up. I just do karaoke and quiz nights now. I got really fed up with it. Once you get fed up with something, you've got to move on, haven't you? You absolutely have. Um, Christina says, there's a Ralph Lauren outlet shop five minutes walk from me. Where, whereabouts are you again, Christina? I can't remember where you are now. I love going to the outlet stores, um, outlet villages, I think they're called. Um, we do have them here, but nowhere near on the scale that you have in the uh, United States, uh, in Florida in particular, International Drive. There's one at either end. There's an indoor one, which is, it's okay. But the outdoor one is much more fun. There's so much there. So much there. I love going to outlet stores. I really do. Uh, Stefan says, sounds ideal. I would imagine for that price, it would include your unlimited flights. Well, if it did, that's that's a really good deal, isn't it? 1,750 quid. Fly as much as you want for a month. On a private jet. Can you just imagine that? Oh, hello, Steph. Yeah, it's Chris here. I'm just popping off to Berlin today. I've got to go. You know, my flight goes in 10 minutes. I'm not at the airport yet. You haven't got to be there until like a few minutes before. Obviously, you still have to have, I suppose you still have to have your passport and all that, don't you? On a little plane with just a slacked amount of people in. Oh, that is the way to go, isn't it, eh? Perhaps I could have my own private jet. My favourite singer of all time, Mr Barry Manilow, I believe, has his own private jet. Maybe we could get him on there as well to sing us a few tunes while he's up there. That might be an idea, Martin. <laughs> uh, oh, Adam sent me a little message. Just a moment, please. Oh, Portsmouth. I didn't know there was one at Portsmouth. We haven't been there. Hang on, let me write that down. Gun. 
Wharf, Portsmouth. I shall go there next time then. Because usually we go to the outlet in Oxford. They've got one in Bicester, in Ox Bicester, Bicester, in Oxford. Uh, in Oxford, they've got a, a Ralph Lauren place there and Ted Baker and all the rest of it. Uh, she says, the polo shop does have riding crops to match your cane. Oh, does it really? Do you know I could have a selection of canes against here? Just in case, you know, people misbehave in here. We're not having any misbehaviour here in the Mirable Studios. Thank you very much. Um... It's a private jet. Uh, yes, it's a private jet. <laughs> are, you a, are you a Prosecco drinker, are you? I'm on the Slimming World diet, dear. Well, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle change. Hang on. Now, let's just read this. Um, someone's Adam says he sent me a private message, so I'll just uh, have a quick look at that. I've got a little video to show you before we go today, boys and girls, as well. There's a little video. Um... <clears throat> No, I don't think I can mention that, Adam. <laughs> I don't think we can mention that sort of thing on the programme, dear. That is for your private thing. Private thing. Thank you. Oh, so so he's been there as well, has he? Hop on the ferry. Come north in Portsmouth. It's a really nice place to go. And you can hop on the ferry. Just go to the Island of White. Oh, the Isle of White there. The Island of White. Now, that is a racist place if ever I've heard of one. Only white people are allowed there. It's disgusting. Isle of Wight. Wrong, wrong, wrong in all forms. Of course, if you know the particular TV show I'm quoting from there, you'll find that most amusing. Other people will be saying, hey, what's, the way, what's he going on about? What's he going on about? They go, don't they? Right, let me play you out this um, little video uh, today, boys and girls. Uh, a young man called Jake, um, who is a bit of a music fan, aren't you, Jake? He was singing with... Billy Ocean, I think he, he he met him in a bar. Let me find the message here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here we go. I done... Hi, Chris, it's Jake. How are you? I always watch your show. I done the make a wish to meet Billy Ocean and sing with him. And he sent over a little video. So check out this. If you ever want to meet your favourite stars, it's always possible. Here's Jake singing in a bar with Billy Ocean. <laughs> Love really hurts without you. Love really hurts through and through. And it's breaking my heart. What can I do without you? There we are. Thank you very much for sending that in, Jake. I'm now able to play out your videos if you ever send anything in like that. Feel free to do so, boys and girls. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk or you can send it over on Facebook as well, boys and girls, as a message and I can get it off that as well so we can play um, uh, videos out. Isn't that wonderful to meet one of your favourite stars like that? You will remember, of course, that a couple of years ago I was able to meet the wonderful Linda Gray, a.k.a. Sue Ellen from Dallas. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. Oh, that was one of the highlights of my life, meeting Sue Allen of Dallas. Um, I was. Um, I would love to meet Barry Manilow. I'd like to meet Barry Manilow. Um, is there anyone else? There's a few people. Shirley Bassey. Quite like to meet Shirley Bassey. You know, prop, proper celebrities. Not this lot on the only way as Essex dear, or Celebrity Jungle. Get me. Not. So I'm not interested in celebrities dear. Not really in Cheryl Cole. Not interested, darling. Not really. Big stars are, are the ones I'd like to meet. I really would. OK, we'll do today's birthdays and then we'll um, wrap up this morning, boys and girls. Uh, happy birthday this morning to Martin Daly, who hits the big 6-0 today. Happy birthday, Martin. 60. Yes, you got there. Congratulations. How on earth did you manage to get that far? I'm surprised sitting here I've got this far, to be honest. Andy Henley. Good morning, Andy. Happy birthday to you. Kieran Sheard. Kieran works at the Camden Eye, where I do the karaoke on Sunday nights. That's a great night, that is. They've got the most fantastic sound system as they're in there as well. I've just had some new posters done. Oh, I haven't got them here. So that's uh, on Sunday night, karaoke at the Camden Eye, 8 till 10.45. And you come out of Camden Station, cross the road, and it's there. Camden Eye, Sundays, 8 till 10.45 for karaoke. Happy birthday, Kieran. Kieran sings as well. He sings... 
da 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 I'm sure he sings that one. Walk of Life. And what's the other one he sings? Can't remember the other one. And he's got a good voice as well. Happy birthday, sir. Ian Donaldson today is 50 years old on this Friday, the 21st of July. Johnny Pablo Morrison, 21 today. He was working in a bar in London. Bumped into him at the place I used to work at in Clapham a few times. So happy birthday to you, Johnny. And happy birthday, 46 years old today, to Gary Lovegrove. Now, how many names have we got there? I might just be able to fit all those in this morning. Right, here we go. Let's sing the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Martin, Andy, Kieran, Ian, Johnny and Gary. Happy birthday to you. Oh, I told you I'd fit all those in this morning, didn't I? I haven't left anyone out there, have I? No, nope, that's everyone. Good. That's everyone. That's it for the show today. Uh, let me see if there's any late messages coming in there. <coughs> let me have... Uh... Ah, yes, uh, sad to hear you've stopped DJing. What a career, the 30 years. I'm just about to hit 10. Oh, you've got another 20 to go yet, Steph. Are you a fantastic DJ, my friend. You're a really good DJ. I said that from the first time I ever saw you. You remember that other business down that ghastly place in, um, what was it, Valley's Lounge? Oh, do you remember the manager there? What a, what a, oh, I nearly swore then. I will. What an arsehole. <laughs> Not a clue. Not a clue, dear. Stuck in the 80s. Oh, have you got any Kylie? They're all dancing, they're all asking for R&B. And I think that part of that, part of that is one of the reasons I uh, stopped doing it. It's always a constant fight, isn't it, between management, what one management one, and what the customers are asking you for. It's like a constant fight. Anyway, I'm out of it now, and I'm, but I couldn't even tell you what's in the charts now. I stopped, I only stopped about five weeks ago. I gave up my last DJing job. Here, here's the indication that I've got a bit older. Here's the indication. I gave it up because the place I worked at Thursday started wanting to go to three o'clock. And I was, I was two o'clock there. And that was bad enough. I was falling asleep at about one o'clock. So to go to three, I thought, oh, no, that's it. So I gave it up. But I'm very happy doing my karaoke and quiz nights. I'd like another karaoke night somewhere or another quiz night, I think, perhaps. Uh, I have two nights off at the moment, which is OK. You know, it's fine. I find plenty to do myself on those. Um, he says, I know what you're saying, though. If you get bored, you've just got to change, change it up. You have. Once you get bored with something like DJing, singing, entertainment, you've got to give it up. People often wonder, you know, why um, uh, you see television people or, or pop artists and you you from the customer point of view i.e me i see people like one direction having fantastic time on the stage all these girls and boys <laughs> after them um singing on the stage loads and loads of money and then they give up you know, why have they given up they got all that fame, all the fortune, all the people that fancy them. They got anything they want and they give it up because they're bored with it. Everything, I think, has um, a point at which you get bored with it. I, I don't know about what I'm doing here. This isn't really a job. You know, I don't get paid to do this. This is just a bit of fun. I don't think this, this, this is something you could get bored at unless I had to stick within a format. Um, I, I've known presenters, I knew one particular person who was on LBC and he was on talk radio a, a quite a long time ago. And, um, you know, he, he said he liked my show, what I do. And I said, how do I get it on the radio? He said, if you got it on the radio, you'd be really disappointed because then you've got to stick to all sorts of rules, timings. You can't say that in case that upsets someone and all this. Whereas doing it on the internet, I say anything I want. The last thing I'd ever want to do is upset someone. But on radio, you'd have to be much carefuler. It's one of the reasons I stopped recording the show, you may have noticed, for Upload Radio, uh, because there were some restrictions there. They, they were never a problem, but I, I find myself holding back, so I, I stopped doing that one completely on the um, Upload Radio. So interesting. But we, we all get bored of all sorts of jobs, right? don't you, in the end? But this, I don't think I'd ever get bored of doing this, really. 
Colchester, that's the one. Colchester. Oh, dreadful place. Uh, West Five tonight. What, for me? I don't think so, dear. No. I don't think I'll ever walk back through those doors again. That was one of the most boring jobs ever. <laughs> it was just awful. Awful. That and the way the manager used to treat the bar staff. Have you looked at Have you watched him? I suggest you watch him and look at the way he treats, he talks to the little bar, the young people. It's, it's disgusting. It really is. Done my head, done my head, done my head. Done my head in. All right. Uh, let's go, gang. We're going to go now. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, now, tonight, it's karaoke at uh, Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. We have a very busy night there. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at midnight. Get there nice and early if you want to sing. By 10.30, generally, we're full up with songs and you won't get a song in. It's a fun night. We don't take it too seriously. I never take life too seriously. And if you want to come down there, it's every Friday, 8.30 till midnight or every Monday with cheap drinks, 8 till 11.30. Enjoy your Friday. And I'm going to sort my new plants out now. See you very soon. Cheerio now.